Greetings and salutations, internet friends, and welcome back to another episode of the First Time Film Club. My name is Emily, your titular, wink, first timer. This is Matthew, my husband, Cinema Sherpa, and viewer submitted title, Cinema Commando. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Sometimes he goes. Anyways, that one's submitted Uh by Jackson (laughs) Rennie. Thank you so much. And of course, we have Pippin. He's our perfectly precious little pussycat. He (laughs) likes naps most of the time up here, but sometimes on the floor. So if he disappears, that's where he went. For those of you joining us for the first time, hello. How are you? What we're doing here is watching our way through a very long list of movies that typically I've never seen, but that Matthew has, i.e. Cinema Sherpa. That being said, I do note that this is one of our Just Some Superfan Patreon picks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, patron, for your pick. Matthew, what are we watching? Today, we are watching the 1964 war comedy, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. And as per usual, I give you the year, genre, and title. You go in with whatever you already know, then we watch the movie and review it. So, what do you know about Dr. Strangelove? I know that I have more questions than answers just based on the title alone. (laughs) I didn't realize that this was like a comedy. Uh, I thought, I've only ever seen like the the movie poster of it. And I think it's in black and white. Um, I have a question. Is this like an alternate title thing? Or that's just like the whole... That's the whole title. Well, that's... All right. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, what am I going to put on a YouTube title? That's too much. I'm not going to be able to get that in there. (laughs) uh, You can just go with Dr. Strange. That's what I'm going to go with. People will know. Okay. I don't know anything about this. I'm um, interested to see it. That's what I know. (laughs) Well, other than that, the only thing I have for first time viewers is you may see my phone in my hand at some point during the movie. That's because I'm taking notes on things to talk about afterwards. That being said, ready to watch. Let's go. The U.S. Air Force that their safeguards would prevent the occurrence of such events as are depicted in this film. Oh boy. Furthermore, it should be noted that none of the characters portrayed in this film are meant to represent any real persons living or dead. Well, that bodes well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sets the tone. That's crazy. That's still so crazy to me that they can fuel airplanes in the air. Like, I don't know why that, that of all the things blows my mind. Wait, Stanley, Stanley, Cru- Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick, Kubrick. There you go. James Earl Jones. Okay, it's hard for me to read this text. Those planes are doing it. <laughs> General Rutherford. Wait. Group Captain Mandrake speaking. Is that Peter Sellers? Okay. The base is being put on condition red. Group Captain, I'm afraid this is not an exercise. Not an exercise, huh? <laughs> it looks like we're in a shooting war. Oh, hell. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> I want you to transmit Plan R. I want all privately owned radios to be immediately impounded. They might be used His to name issue is instructions to saboteurs. Jack Ripper. Jack D. Ripper. Yeah. Each B-52 can deliver a nuclear bomb load of 50 megaton, equal to 16 times the total explosive force of all the bombs and shells used by all the armies in World War II. Hate that. Yeah. Well, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, uh. Did you say wing attack plan R? Oh my God. Well, I've been to one world fair, a picnic and a rodeo, and that's the stupidest thing I ever heard come over a set of earphones. Who is that? I, I know that person. <laughs> we gotta go get a shitload of dimes. Is that him? I don't know. An old ripper wouldn't be giving us plan R unless them rooskies had already clobbered Washington. Up. Washington. <laughs> and yes, you're right. Yay. Oh, yes, General Turgidson is here, but I'm afraid he can't come to the phone at the moment. Oh, we were just catching up on some of the general's paperwork. Oh, were we? Tell him to call, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Base Commander Ripper. I have to think of everything on it. He says he's tried personally several times, but everything is dead. Even the normal phone lines are shut down. Huh? I want to impress upon you the need for extreme watchfulness. The enemy may come individually, or he may come in strength. He may even come in the uniform of our own troops. We must not allow him to gain entrance to this base. Oh. <laughs> Anyone or anything that approaches within 200 yards of the perimeter 
is to be fired upon. Oh, Lord. You're giving me anything less than that. Today, oh. the nation is coming. And my following is Ripper going crazy here. He shut down the base, took all the radios. Seems like the other generals are unaware of this particular plan that Ripper is hatching. Oh, no, we'll see. It doesn't look good. I feel like this sort of thing would have to go through more people than just one. I God, I hope it'd have to go through more people than just one. <laughs> Stand by to set code prefix. Set code prefix. Code prefix oh. set. Oh. 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 I'm ready to target the ICBM complex at Laputa. Otherwise, proceed to secondary target, missile complex, seven miles east of Barshaw. Is that a radio? Music, civilian broadcasting. Hendrix? Yes, sir? I thought I issued instructions for uh-huh. all radios on this base to be impounded. I hadn't switched it off. I thought to myself, our fellows hitting Russian radar cover in 20 minutes, dropping all that stuff, I'd better tell you, because if they do, it'll cause a bit of a sting. Yeah. Well, now you're gonna die. My attack orders have been issued and the orders stand. Hmm. Well, if you'll excuse me saying so, sir, that would be, to my way of thinking, rather, a rather an odd way of looking at it. <laughs> rather stupid. Now, why don't you just take it easy, group captain? Please make me a drink of grain alcohol and rainwater and help yourself to whatever you'd like. What? No. It is my clear duty, under the present circumstances, to issue the recall code upon my own authority and bring back the wing. I'm the only person who knows the three-letter code group. Then I must insist, sir, that you give them to me. Yep. The decision is being made by the president and the joint chiefs in the war room with the Pentagon. And when they realize there's no possibility of recalling the wing, there will be only one course of action open. Total commitment. <laughs> Do you recall what Clemenceau once said about war? He said war was too important to be left to the generals. But today, war is too important to be left to politicians. Oh my God. Oh! I can no longer sit back and allow communist infiltration, communist indoctrination, communist conspiracy to sap and impurify all of our precious bodily fluids. Oh my God, art imitating life. Okay. Mr. President, the Secretary of State is in Vietnam, the Secretary of Defense is in Laos, and the Vice President... After I get over the painfulness of what it's presenting here, I appreciate the cinematic situation. Now, it appears that the order called for the planes to uh, attack their targets inside Russia. The uh, planes are fully armed with nuclear yes. weapons. Yes, that's the appropriate response. I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. It's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. It certainly does. Yeah, you don't say. Forgetting the provisions of Plan R, sir, in which a lower echelon commander may order nuclear retaliation after a sneak attack. If... The normal chain of command has been disrupted. I admit the human element seems to have failed us here. As it always does. Well, I assume then that the planes will return automatically once they reach their fail-safe point. Well, no, sir, I'm afraid not. You see, the planes were holding... <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. You, you, you'd think that, wouldn't you? Now, in order to prevent the enemy from issuing fake orders, CRM-114 is designed not to receive at all, unless the message is preceded by the... Correct three letter code group prefix. And you mean to tell me, General Turgidson, that you will be unable to recall the aircraft? That's about the size. That's about the size of it. General Ripper called. Uh, I have a portion of the transcript of that uh, conversation. They are on their way in, and no one can bring them back. God willing, we will prevail in peace and freedom from fear and in true health through the purity and essence of our natural fluids. <laughs> what the f? A madman has taken control of the bomb. Like, that's the... We're still trying to figure out the oh meaning of that God. last phrase. Oh my. It's, it's, he's a crazy man. Sense. This man is obviously a psychotic. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hold off judgment on a thing like... Bullshit! <laughs> Have you recognized the president yet? Sorry, I've just been too... I want them to enter the base, locate General Ripper, and put him in immediate telephone contact with me. Don't be mad at me. Is that Peter Sellers? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. In less than 15 minutes from now, the Ruskies will be making radar contact with the plane. They are going to go absolutely ape, and they're going to strike back with everything they got. On the other hand, we, we just... were to immediately launch an all-out and coordinated attack on all their airfields and missile bases. Oh, my God. a damn good chance of catching them with their pants down. Oh, my God. Blech. I agree, Pippin. I want to run away, too. 
So you're literally trying to spin this? The of our country never to strike first with nuclear weapons. President, I would, I would say that General Ripper has already invalidated that policy. <laughs> oh my God. Am I to understand the Russian ambassadors to be admitted to entrance to the, the war room? Yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly how to put this, sir, but are you aware of what a serious breach of security that would be? I mean, you see everything. You, you, you see the big board. Is it? You'll see the big board. Survival kit contents check. 145 caliber automatic. Two boxes of ammunition. One miniature combination Russian and grave book and Russian? Bible. <laughs> what? One issue of prophylactics. Three lipsticks. Wait a minute. Three pair of nylon stockings. What? <laughs> Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs> <laughs> you sure gotta have those commies. Yeah. Oh my god. Gee, those trucks sure look like the real thing, don't they? I wonder where they got them from. Open up at 200 yards. What you should have done is send him a candy gram. <laughs> what the hell? Like, the thing is, like, this could happen. They, the Air Force can say all day long that it couldn't, but it could. I've done as you asked. Be careful, Mr. President. I think he's drunk. <laughs> it's okay. I might as well have been dealing with drunk people this whole time. Fine, I can hear you now, Dimitri. Well then, as you say, we're both coming through fine. Well, it's good that you're fine, then, oh and I'm God, fine. Get through it. No, it's not fine. Nuclear war. We've always talked about the possibility of something going wrong with the bomb. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he did. He ordered his planes to attack your country. <clears throat> uh, well, let me finish the meeting. <laughs> let me finish. Oh. If we're unable to recall the planes, then I'd say that, uh, well, retaliatory uh, action must be we're taken. We're just gonna have to help you destroy them, Dimitri. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm very sorry. All right, you're sorrier than I am, <laughs> but I am sorry as well. I am as sorry as you are, Demi. Oh my God! Uh, I am because I'm capable of being just as sorry as you are. Oh so God. we're both sorry. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. What is this? What? The fools, the doomsday machine, a device which will destroy all human and animal life on Earth. What? Oh, is that what they're getting up to? Way up in the Arctic. Mandrake, water is the source of all life. You and I need fresh, pure water to replenish our precious bodily fluids. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> fluid guy. Have you ever heard of a thing called fluoridation? Fluoridation of water? Oh boy. Do you realize that fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived, dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face? <laughs> <laughs> Our studies show that even the worst fallout is down to a safe level after two weeks. You've obviously Shit. never heard of cabal thorium G. Well, what about it? Well, what about it? <laughs> a lethal cloud of radioactivity which will encircle the Earth for 93 years. The doomsday machine is designed to trigger itself automatically. That's an obvious comic trick, Mr. President. We're wasting valuable time. Look at the big board. What? <laughs> Look at the big board. Dr. Strangelove, do we have anything like that in the works? Oh. A moment, please, Mr. President. Oh. <laughs> He's just all over the place. See, everywhere. This idea was not a practical deterrent for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. <laughs> deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy fear to attack. The doomsday machine is... Gee, I wish we had one of them doomsday machines. Oh my god! whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world? Y yeah. It was to be announced at the party congress on Monday. Ugh. As you know, the premier loves surprises. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you tell the world? <laughs> Surprise! Peace is our profession. Oh. Jack! Don't you think we'd be better off in some other part of the room away from all this flying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When did you first develop this theory? Well, I uh, first became aware of it, Mandrake, during the physical act of love. What? A profound sense of fatigue, a feeling of emptiness followed. Luckily, I, I was able to interpret these feelings correctly. Were you? 
I can assure you it has not recurred, Mandrake. Women sense my power. They seek the life essence. <laughs> I do not avoid women, Mandrake. Yeah. I do deny them my essence. <laughs> Boys must have surrendered. Let's recall the winger. Those boys were like my children, Mandrake. Well, children constantly disappoint us. No, oh, I'm sure they all gave it their very best. And I'm equally sure they all died thinking of you. Yeah. Every man yep. jack of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Guarantee it. And, uh, well, you gonna have a little wash and brush up, are you? What a good <laughs> Just idea. Just have a brush and wash up. Same with you, Jack boy. I'll try and guess. Pop. I'll try and guess what the code is. <laughs> Look on his desk. Maybe he wrote it on a sticky note. I don't know. <laughs> That's a possibility. Very strong possibility. DSO to Captain, I have an unidentified radar blip. That's a UAP, baby. <laughs> Looks like a missile tracking us. Range 10 miles. I know this is like an actual like military song, but all I can hear is the ants <laughs> marching song. <laughs> well, oh. Okay. Oh boy, what? What? Purity of essence. Oh my god. Put your hands over your head. I'm General Ripper's executive officer. Where's General Ripper? Dead in the bathroom. He's dead in the bathroom. Now look, Colonel Bat Guano, if that really is. Bat Guano? <laughs> Stop it. not great. Oh, so if the code comes in, they won't even know it? I've worked on our rate of fuel loss. This gives us a radius of action sufficient to take out primary and secondary targets, but we will not be able to make it back to any base or neutral country. However, we would have enough fuel to ditch. It sounds like it's time to ditch. This hype why they might harpoon us, but they dang sure ain't gonna spot us on no radar screen. <sighs> I think there's some kind of deviated prevert. Oh my god, what? General Ripper found out about your preversion and what? that you were organizing some kind of mutiny of preverts. Now move! What? <laughs> Try and get the President of the United States on the phone. I'm sorry, I haven't got enough change. Uh, could you make this a collect call, operator? Oh my god. They won't accept the call. Have you got 55 cents? <laughs> that killed the cola machine. I want you to shoot the lock off it. There may be some change in there. That's private property. Oh my god! <laughs> you just took part in an incursion? That's why it's funny. <laughs> Shoot it off! Shoot with a gun! That's what the bullets are for, you twit! <laughs> but if you don't get the President of the United States on that phone, you know what's gonna happen to you? Yeah, what? yeah, 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 whatever. You're gonna have to answer to the Coca-Cola company. Oh, God. <laughs> they don't mess to around. To be fair. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right, that's funny. Well, oh, that's the one that got yeah, you. That's the one. That's the winner right there. 12, 22, 30. 38 are reported destroyed by enemy action. All other missions have acknowledged recall code. Premier Kissoff's calling again and he's hopping mad. <laughs> he says that one of the planes hasn't turned back. He says according to information forwarded by our air staffs, it's headed for the missile complex at Laputa. That, that's impossible, Mr. Red. I mean, uh, uh, look at the big board. <laughs> look, 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 look at the big board. Look at the big board. <laughs> look, we've got an acknowledgement from every plane except the four you've shut down. Oh. Uh, it's one we shot. He says their air defense now only claims three aircraft confirmed. Uh. The fourth may only be damaged. Is this gonna is this gonna set off the doomsday machine? Yes. I guess you're just gonna have to get that plane, Dimitri. Yeah. D Dimitri, there's no point in you getting hysterical at a moment like this. <laughs> Are you serious? Dimitri, keep your feet on the ground when you're talking, Dimitri. I, I'm just worried. That's all. You don't say. Sir, if we continue to lose fuel at the present rate. I estimate we only have uh, 38 minutes flying time, which will not even take us as far as the primary. Oh, boy. We ain't come this far just to dump this thing in the drink. What's the nearest target opportunity? Oh, my God. <laughs> How you doing over there? Not great. Not great. General Turgidson, is there really a chance for that plane to get through? If the pilot's good, see, he can barrel that baby in so low. I mean, you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight you. Yeah, but has he got a chance? Has he got a chance? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you. Oh, shit, he's got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it'd be funny if there weren't actually people like this in our, in our government and military. Bomb fusing circuits, one through four, test. 
Bomb fusing circuits one through four test. Lights on. It'd be so cool if the, the armament was broke and it, oh, the bomb don't bomb. Whoops. Hmm. That'd be real handy. Uh, bomb door circuits. Negative function. Operate manual override. No! It's broke. Roger. This is God telling you not to do this. I'm going down below and see what I can do. Roger. Oh my god. Ugh. Ugh. Just go ahead and stand on the bomb there, you dumbass. Like, are they they not realize that they're flying too low? If you drop that bomb, you do not have time to get out of the explosive area because you were at such a low altitude. I'm sorry. I know. I know. This is supposed to be a comedy and I'm taking it way too seriously. Yeah. Hey, what about Major Kong? <laughs> Mr. President, I would not rule out the chance to preserve a nucleus of human specimen. Mm. At the bottom of uh, some of our deeper mind shaft. Mm -hmm. How long would you have to stay down there? I mean, about, what do you say, 90 years? I would think that uh, possibly uh, 100 years. Mm. It would not be difficult, my fear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President. Mr. Yeah, President. yeah, yeah. Of course, it would be absolutely vital that our top government and military men be included who foster and impart the required principles uh, of leadership and Would tradition. it? Would it? Oh. The proper breeding techniques and the oh, God. ratio of, say, 10 females to each male. <laughs> what is this? What the hell? <laughs> I think we ought to look at this from a military point of view. Oh, God. Supposing the Ruskies stashed away some big bomb, see, and we didn't. When they come out in a hundred years, they could take over. Oh my God! Sorry. We must be increasingly on the alert to prevent them from taking over other mine shaft space. I have a plan. Oh my God. <laughs> Monsieur! Jesus Christ. Mutually assured destruction. Oof. So, that was Dr. Strangelove. Or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Mm-hmm. Overall thoughts? Interesting title. Interesting title. As Dr. Strangelove, I think, probably had the least amount of screen time. He did. I'm going to say, from a production and cinematic standpoint, this is a great movie. Because from what I could tell, they used minimal sets. Mm-hmm. Very minimal music, which I think both added and detracted a little bit for me because, okay. like, I was aware of the lack of music. Um, because when, like, the I know it's called something different, but when you know the ants marching in theme comes in, I was like, oh, yeah, music. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the actors were phenomenal, they all did a great job. Peter Sellers <laughs> just. The probably the phone call with Dimitri, like those were my Which time exactly. <laughs> those were my favorite bits. Dimitri, keep your feet on the ground when you're talking to me. Like that tickled me. Um, well, I can be just as sorry as you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're both just really sorry. All right. Everybody did a great job. The cinematography, like the, at the very beginning when. Ripper is talking and there's like this a angle it's like slightly upshot and it's it's a close up like it's a very like interesting angle so I appreciate the cinematography aspect of this movie I see it I appreciate it I don't love the topic that's that's a me that's a preference thing uh, given the option I really don't like choose anything war related like be it comedy or satire truth be told i'm probably even less likely to pick a like war satire because there's often too much 
life reflected in that arch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it hits too close. Too close I, to home. Yeah. <laughs> too close to the truth. Yeah. Um, and that like it doesn't. I don't have a good time with that. So that's a that's a personal preference on me. But objectively, this was a good movie. Like it was well made. I'm interested to see what the budget is. I'd be even more interested to know. I imagine most of it was just spent on like the actors because like one actor in particular, Peter Sellers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was half of the budget. That's that tracks. That tracks. It was around close to two million ish dollars for the budget, and Peter Sellers was play, paid one million dollars. There were certain bits that were hysterical. Um, the whole water, the whole precious fluids thing, that's like, oh my God. You know, fluoridation is. Oh my God. But again, like that, uh, that, that whole conspiracy, like it's too close. It is just wild how this movie was made in the height of kind of the Cold War. Yeah. yeah. But it's still so aggressively applicable today. Man, I think I need to get into notes. Okay. Uh, so, as you said, this is a Stanley Kubrick movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen uh, a few of his movies now. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, uh, The Shining, A Clockwork Orange. Uh, where would this one place among those that you've seen so far? Uh, the Shining would be the top. Probably The Shining. Probably this. Then Full Metal Jacket. Then A Clockwork Orange. Okay. Because Clockwork Orange is rough. <laughs> like, Clockwork Orange and Full Metal Jacket are like almost neck and neck, but it, I'd say I like Clockwork Orange slightly less. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing you mentioned was the title was interesting, mainly because Dr. Strangelove himself was uh, barely, in yeah. the movie. he had the least amount of yeah. like, screen time. And also, one of the things you noted uh, at some point during the movie is like, because you said it hit too close to home. It's like just one psycho could just end up, you know, causing the like world annihilation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there were other titles for the movie that were in consideration. Okay. Uh, one was <laughs> Dr. Doomsday or How to Start World War Three Without Even Trying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, that would have been pretty appropriate, I think. Uh, the other one was Dr. Strange Loves Secret Uses of Uranus. <laughs> no, no, no. And another one was just called Wonderful Bomb. That one would have worked too with the with the satire of it. I like the Doomsday, like that one. That's probably my favorite. Uh, another thing you said, I remember you said that uh, it hits too close to home, and like this could actually happen. Like they could say this couldn't happen, but it could. But this movie actually led to policy changes to ensure that nothing well, like this God. would ever happen. Well, thank God. <laughs> Art imitating life and then art influencing life. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's like, you know, maybe we should consider, like, could this happen? I imagine that's how, like, the military heads talk. Do you think this could happen? Look at the big board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big board bit was very funny. The copious amounts of chewing gum was funny. When he's like getting into it and he like falls over and then points back, look at the big board. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> I love but, it. But Kubrick didn't know that. So he thought he was just being in character. Yeah. So he kept it in the movie. Well, he stayed in character. So it yeah. works. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, they had some run ins, I guess I could say, with like the actual military oh god in one instance while they were filming their aerial footage over greenland okay one of the camera crews uh actually filmed a secret u.s military base oh no and the plane was forced down and they were questioned because they were thought to be possible Sp spies yeah another thing is is the the plane that they were flying mm -hmm. the b-52 bomber mm -hmm. was like top secret like basically top of the line the cutting edge of technology oh yeah and the military the air force they refused to grant uh, access to that after they read the script they refused to provide any <laughs> any assistance to the movie whatsoever so the the <laughs> the production design crew had to recreate the b-52 like cockpit and inner workings from just from one picture that came out in this aerial magazine and whenever they invited actual like military members came in they were like this is it this oh, is perfect God. and uh from what i read stanley kubert was 
afraid that they would again be be suspected of some kind of spy. Yeah. Or they would be in terror, like they would get a visit from the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of like the was it the Die Hard movie, right? Where they the old dude got in trouble because like his plan could have worked. <laughs> like, yes, and he described the the reserve exactly mm-hmm, how it was. Yeah. And they're like, how do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, another reason this may have felt. Uh, a little too close to home or too real. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how much you actually know about Stanley Kubrick. I know no. his name and that he is a director. He's kind of got a reputation for being, or had a reputation for being hard to work with. Always wanting like perfection mm. and always doing like multiple takes, multiple takes. I think I remember you saying that in Full Metal Jacket. Uh, but one of the reasons this may feel too real to go, it's like that intensity and everything has quest for like perfectionism leads to an insane amount of like research and everything he read mm-hmm. 50 books about nuclear war like as research for the movie i mean i, I mean i appreciate the i don't know gumption <laughs> yeah like even on this movie uh with with george c scott big boy mm-hmm. he apparently vowed to never work with kubrick again mm. even though he ended up on later on saying that this was one of his favorite roles but he was basically annoyed and rubbed the wrong way that Kubrick kept like telling him to overact and mm-hmm. overact and like really bring it out. Yeah, and even uh, Peter Sellers himself wasn't really big on doing multiple takes. It was funny because Kubrick was like, his performance gets better with every take. And Peter Sellers was like, I don't understand why he keeps me wanting to do this. I'm doing it the same way every time. Yeah. Well, I will say, what was his name? Scott? What's George his- Scott. George, George Scott. C. Scott. Uh, to to his point, um, I've done some things in my life, like professionally, that I am so proud of, like that I, I look back on fondly. But I also know that I would never put myself in the position to do those again. Like I've put on massive events that were really successful, mm-hmm. but it was one of the most stressful points in my life. And I never want to do that again. So, like, I feel you. Yes. I feel you. I get you. <laughs> yeah. Peter Sellers, especially... He improvised a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. (laughs) Which is why I think he probably didn't like doing multiple takes. Yeah. Because with comedy, a lot of times, it's like when you get the thing, you know it and you're done. So. Yeah. From what I read, he told Kubrick that he couldn't promise to do the same thing twice and he didn't want to do anything more than two or three times. Yeah. Whenever he has his speech at the end talking about underground and his hands going out of control and (laughs) basically because he said he didn't want to do too many takes and... He could only do it so many times mm-hmm. and he couldn't promise to do the same thing twice. He, like, Kubrick set up like six different cameras to capture Smart. all these different angles. Smart. Smart. And if you notice when you go back and edit this, during that, there's a lot of like cutaways. Mm-hmm. That's because people that were standing around couldn't hold their laughter in <laughs> because nobody knew what he was going to yeah. do. Not even himself. Yeah. He had nothing prepared. He no. just, like, was in character yeah yeah when you go back and edit you'll notice that whenever he's like giving a speech and his hand goes out of control and he throws the salute up the first time puts it back down so it's hitting it the the russian like ambassador Uh is behind him you can see him trying to hold in a laugh like (laughs) it's on his face that one made it into the movie i I appreciate that uh also peter sellers was originally supposed to play the uh role of major kong (laughs) <laughs> the one who rides. Yeah. The, yeah. But he was having trouble developing a Texas accent. <laughs> so Kubrick decided to get someone who more naturally fit the role. Mm-hmm. They made a call to John Wayne. He did not respond. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. So they uh, eventually ended up picking Slim Pickens. Okay. They did not tell him this was a comedy. They only showed him the script and the scenes that he was in. And he, played, he was playing it straight the whole time. Well, so, I mean... That's, I think, what sells the, the, that's what made it extra scary for me is that, like, they didn't know any of this. Like, they were unaware of all this situation. They were completely blind. So, I think that that was the right choice, not giving him the full piece of information because it, it bred his character to be yeah. more accurate. And speaking of someone who, like, naturally fits the role, James Earl Jones, who this was his first theatrical really? film. Really? I was wondering. I was like, man, he didn't talk nearly enough in this. They they miscast him. He should have been somewhere but, uh, talking. 
he thought that Slim Pickens was just remaining in character off camera until someone told him, no, that's just the way he talks. That's just him. That's just him. Yeah. (laughs) All I will ever be able to associate, like immediate association is going to be, oh, hell, somebody go back and get a shitload of dimes. (laughs) Yeah, I love that you could pick him out by his voice. I mean, that's my only skill, realistically. (laughs) I don't know how you'll feel about this, but you couldn't tell in the movie because it's black and white, obviously. But the uh, Stanley Kubert wanted the tablecloth in the war room on the table to be green so the actors would feel like they're playing a game of poker over the world's fate. Like, Wow. Didn't even realize there was a tablecloth. So, yeah, no, I did not know. <laughs> well, there were also like other versions of the film. The food table uh-huh. that was there was originally in the ending was originally going to end up being a pie fight between the American and the Russians. That would have been great. I'd have been yeah. all right with that. Actually. Another version had like aliens watching this unfold from afar. Okay. So this was the final thought that I had as the like all of the explosions were going off in my head. I was sitting here going, this is why aliens don't talk to us. <laughs> this is 100 percent why aliens will not talk to us. So, yeah. <laughs> OK, hold on. I have actually a quick question. They're talking about the end. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Russian ambassador at the very end, you know, he pulled like looked like a stopwatch or something out of his shoe. Mm-hmm. What was he doing there? Did he like? Oh, he was taking pictures of the board and the war room. To what end? I'm sorry. Was I under? Maybe I was confused. The whole Doctor Str- or Doctor well, Strange Love uh, thing. They didn't have time to do any of that. Was the the Doomsday advice not? an immediate thing so i'm glad you asked that because i feel like that particular part of the movie just sums up the entire like theme of the movie it does you're right well there's like two ways you could read it i guess there's one way of the doomsday device was a lie because why would he be taking pictures yeah for strategic if there's not going to be anything yeah but i don't see it that way i see it as like i said it's the the total sum of the entire like theme of point and theme of the movie is that even with the like assured destruction of everyone and everything on the planet, it's still not enough to keep to keep us them from, from being yeah <laughs> uh, the horrible creatures that we can be. Yeah, interesting, interesting <laughs> movie for shearsles for shearsles. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things where it's no matter how much you read and understand about what was going on then it's one of those like you had to be there oh yeah absolutely i understand i mean there because at the time like there were people like kids coming up with the duck and cover like i mean it was an entire separate kind of zeitgeist right Mm -hmm. like that like fear of war that particular time the fear of war bred like this very specific kind of climate um so yeah i know that i miss a lot from what this is presenting. Like, I Mm -hmm. get that. But I also know that a lot that is presented here is still very present. I mean, but that is the nature of human beings. We're always, we're always that way. (laughs) All right, well, let's go to ratings. You go first as always. Um, so as I said in the beginning of the review, objectively, this is a very well-made movie. It's a very, um, well thought out movie especially having like the notes that you've given me about all that went into and all that kubrick you know studied about and everything uh so i appreciate everything about it and the work that went into it i loved the funny bits i love peter sellers <laughs> i loved um scott i've already forgotten his george, name. C. george scott. c scott just just the whole the whole cast was the great so it is not a, a fault of any of that. It is just the topic mm-hmm. uh, and my personal preferences that this rating is based off of. I'll give this one a seven. That's personal preference, seven. What okay. about you? Uh, yeah, seven for me as well. Oh, okay. This, as far as like Kubrick movies go, this isn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, seven for me. Yeah. Pippin. Pippin. Yeah, yes, hello. How many, uh, how, what would you rate this one? Yeah, the movie we just watched. What is it? You're being lazy. <laughs> Ten strange love beans. Okay. You know what? It's fine. You deserve it. You've mm-hmm. earned it. You're super cute. So, Ten strange love beans it is. Uh, y'all heard it here. Seven, seven. Ten strange love beans. Let us know 
What do you think about it? What would you rate it? Do you have any fun additional tidbits behind the scenes information that like maybe he didn't go over or maybe he just didn't even know about? Yeah. Blo- blow his mind. Blow my mind. Hell. Oh. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. We would greatly appreciate it. That's all for me. Anything else from you? No. Nope. Pippin's asleep. Mm-hmm. Y'all. Take care, and we will see you next time with another first time. Bye.